What's going on, PMC fans? My name is North Vader, and welcome back to Power Rankings for the PMC season number four. Uh, this time we're doing week one power week one power rankings, and uh, unfortunately, uh, my wonderful co-host Rapthos was not able to make it this time um, due to the fact that uh, he was sick this week, and um, and he's unable to record. So um, I'm taking the mantle of recording uh, by myself this week. He did, however, um, give me his rankings. Um, but I would like to note that um, the match of Johnny Johnny GP versus The Bird, he did not get to see that match, though. So, he placed those two 15th and 16th, not because uh, they deserve that spot, because they, um, well, he didn't get to see the match. So that's why um, his ranking. So for Rapidos, you'll get to see, and you'll see the 15th, 16th, but for real, like you really see the 1 to 14th, and you'll see my. Month the 16th. Um, we had a lot of very cool games this week, but um, unfortunately, like I saw, I, I guess I should have taken notes. Um, and you know, I was a little bit busy this week, so you know, that's why this is going up a little late, which I definitely do apologize. And uh, hopefully, um, we can uh, get this on time these next these next couple times we lose. So, week one, you know, you always want to start off with a very strong. A de debut match and uh, there were definitely a lot of good games this uh, this week so let's just hop into this um, so for my number 16th um, just ignore Apple this is number 16 so for my number 16 I have the Hamilton Torcats uh, coach by Mago he fought this week he fought Jake and the Virginia Tech Brokies and you know I just felt that uh, the prep was a little adequate, you know. Um, he couldn't, he couldn't really, he didn't really, he played, he didn't really play the greatest, you know. Jake just took advantage of it and uh, played very, very well. And, and um, you know, I felt his team was a lot more passive. Um, and against Jake's very hyper offensive team, um, with like things like Garchomp and Mega Glade and Thunder Asterion which um, just has a lot of momentum with it. You know, um, I think yeah, early in the game he led with his Mega Slowbro and uh, Jake swapped in his Thunder Therian and then his switch and his response to it was so volley electric, which, you know, Jake took advantage of that, Volt switched, went to Pile Swine, wheeled down his Autono, and, um, you know, he had a Zygarde 50, I'm gonna go out of Zygarde 50, Jake had a Tangrowth, uh, granted, the matchup wasn't the best for Mago, but, you know, um, just Jake prepped phenomenally, and, you know, I felt Mago could have done a lot better. But, uh, you know, there's not much else to say. Um, I felt like he could have brought, like, a thousand waves, Zygarde 10%. To try to deal with the, uh, Tangrowth, it's, it's not as bulky as Zygarde 50, and it's a little harder to pull off, but because it's a lot more frail, I don't, I don't think I remember what Jake brought when it, I don't know if it was Fist F or Salt Vest, but, you know, because it's a lot more fraud, I don't think he had HP Ice on it, so Giga Drain, I saw a thousand ways plus Toxic could, uh, could be pulled off, and, uh, you know, but, um, you know, he didn't really play the best, and he ended up losing 4 hours, so that's why, um, I have Miguel at number 16. And at number 15, I have the SO Benefica, coached by Hero. And, um, it's not to say that Hero played bad, or poorly. He played, um, played alright. He went up against Arky and the, uh, San Antonio Victory Bells. And, the reason he's ranked number 15 this week, I know is a very capable player. He's a very good player in this format. Um, he has a couple championships on his belt. But, you know, he brought, he, he brought a team that couldn't really break through um, some of Arky's defensive Pokemon, um, even though he had a Victini and a High Dragon, which could uh, do very well against those Pokemon. You know, um, you know, there's um, Sylveon, Fortress, Among Us, Arenaclus. You know, I actually don't remember if the Arenaclus um, did much. I know the Fortress, the Sylveon, and the Moongus was very annoying for uh, Hera to beat, but. Uh, Victini alone just beat those three. And Grand Y did have a Megazard X. 
which, you know, could have switched it to Victini very nicely. Um, I felt, you know, Hera could have been a little more creative and, um, what's the word? Uh, could have brought, like, a different type of, like, um, maybe, like, a Shuka Toxic Berry uh, Victini, I thought, could have been cool. Uh, to maybe, like, eat a potential Earthquake, um, and, you know, Fire for Toxic, and then, um, you know, like, V-Creates, uh, I don't know. I think Victini gets Taunt as well, and, um, like, Bolt Strike, I think, could have been cool. Uh, Toxic Taunt, yeah, Toxic Taunt, Bolt Strike, v I think, would have been cool against Darky. Um, and, you know, with all those very, all those bulky Pokemon that Arky had, um, it, Hera didn't really have much to play around with, and he ended up letting his wall breakers take a lot of damage. So, uh, Mega Blastoise, actually, I think, no, Mega Blastoise is more of a defensive, uh, spread this week to deal with Zardex. But, um, you know, like, Porygon Z went down very early, which was very, very unfortunate. Um, and Porygon Z is probably one of the best, one of the better brings that he had to deal with the very bulky core that uh, Arhi brought against him. Um, I think, um, I, looking at, um, looking at it, you know, Hair brought Shaman, uh, which I believe he brought Shaman for the Manaphy, which I guess makes some sense, but, um, <sighs> I don't know, I felt like Shaman had a very poor matchup, you know, with Mega, Z Mega Charizard X. There was a Sylveon, there was an Among Us, uh, there was a Reuniclus, you know, I didn't really feel Shaman had the best matchup. While, well, you know, Shaman, I guess, was there for Manaphy. You know, Arceus team just was there to support Manaphy and to beat down Shaman very easily and very efficiently. Um, you know, Hera didn't play bad the match, but he definitely could have played better, and his. I feel. What. What. what what got him to be, what, what uh, sorry, what really ended up deciding, um, for me to be, for him to be the spot is his prep. His prep wasn't as good as, uh, I know he's capable of, and that's why he was ranked number 15 this week. Um, then number 14 spot, um, moving on, uh, Rapidus has the Grimsby Town Grimers, and uh, he did leave me some notes on why he did, um, well, for most of the teams on why he put the rankings here. I put the Grimsby Town Grimers here is, um, is because he brought very little to do with Mandibuzz, and Mandibuzz on, uh, you end up against the Cindy Crocodiles, and, uh, Mandibuzz was the only Mon that, uh, that was really, like, a, a wall, a dedicated wall to the Cindy Crocodiles, and to not bring much to break that, and he had a, t and he had, um, he had a Tyranitar to break that. Um, I just remember since he had a Megalopony, which I can't remember. I don't know. Uh, I had a Jinx. You know, Jinx could have broken that. I say I don't know if Jinx did well in the matchup though, because I don't exactly. Actually, no. I think Jinx would have done decent because um, I remember since he had like a Needle King. He had a he had a Mudsdale. Um. Mandibuzz, so I think Jinx would have been decent, um, and you know, Raptos definitely felt that Rogue could have won this match, but Mandibuzz was just a nuisance, and um, him not playing around the best he could have, and uh, him just not bringing enough to deal with Mandibuzz, that's why Raptos put him in the number 14 spot. Uh, for me, I have the Oregon Ducklets at the number 14 spot, uh, he played the Verd, and the Tampa Bay Frogadiers. And, um, you know, I felt, you know, Johnny, I know he was a very good player as well, same with Hera, um, the prep he had was decent, but, he let, he let, he let a lot of his Pokemon got weakened very early on, he, uh, let the Volcanion take damage from there, he swapped a Volcanion into a Sandslash, um, I'm not really sure why I did that. I know he's predict predicting Stealth Rock, but Earthquake um, was definitely a very considerable. Wait, no. I'm thinking of something. Oh, no, no. I'm thinking of a different match. Whoops. Um, <laughs> but he did lose Volcano and get weakened uh, very early from the, the, the Licky Licky. Um, 
which you know what for earthquakes and really whittled it down. Um, I'm trying to remember as well. What else happened in the match? Um, and, um, okay, so all right, so for, yeah, okay, I think it's gonna remember now. Um, so you know Johnny let a lot of his Pokemon get weakened very early. He let his Needle Queen get weak, like weakened early, which made it very hard for him to deal with the Chestnut and the Ampharos, which the Ampharos was specially defensive uh, to deal with, uh, which is a very good bring on Verd's part to deal with the the Thunderous that John had. Um, you know, Meloetta also went down um, due to a very good switch that uh, Verd made it into his Weavile. Um, you know, Ver, I, get, I know John didn't have much for his uh, Weavile. I think Hitmonchan was his best answer because his team was very Ice Weak and Dark Weak as well, or Knock Off Weak as well. And Hitmonchan was his best response to it, which isn't... Like, it can mock Punch, I guess, and but it doesn't take uh, physical hits too, too well. And, um... I think John could have played a lot better on Weavile. He could have played a lot smarter. Um, Volcanion was a very good Mon because it definitely dealt with Chestnut. Like, um, and you know, I, I know uh, John also got very lucky as well in this match. Um, it ended up going to a 2-0, um, and I think the differential or the, the match would have been a lot. A, like the, the differential would have been a lot more in Bird's favor. If, uh, I believe if he didn't uh, get the luck. I forgot what exactly how, uh, how John got lucky, but um, yeah, so John's in the number 14 spot this week. Um, I definitely feel he can uh, improve. Um, next up, so, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, the so number 13th um, spot, Rapthos has Sydney Crocodiles. And uh, I have the Orlando City Superiors. Um, Raffles has the City Crocodiles in number 13 spot. Um, despite winning and uh, doing decently well, um, he felt that the City Crocodiles could have played a lot better. Um, he mentioned that well, in his video, you know, after the uh, Rock Slide uh, miss, I think it was, you know, he was playing on Tilt, which, you know, I don't blame Tilt happens. And uh, Tilt stinks sometimes. And he definitely could have played a lot better. Um, no, wait, no, no, it wasn't, um, it wasn't Roxo st uh, Stone Edge, Stone Edge Miss. And, um, you know, it was from his Needle King, which is a little funny because Rock Slide Sure Force did very similar, um, to the calcs he was looking at. Um, and Rock Slide just, you know, with Sure Force did very similar mount. It was more accurate, so the miss might not have happened, and it was just much more consistent. Um, you know, he did calm down after because there's a DC that gave him some time to cool off, and uh, that's why he placed uh, the Cine Crooker as number 13 spot. Um, I placed the Orlando City Superiors in the number 13 spot. This is uh, coached by D Pad Gamer. He went up against um, Omega V in the Call of Water Rabidash. Uh, now, I felt that uh, the, well, the reason I placed him this low is because, well, for one thing, he lets Umbreon get very weak and weakened. When uh, Umbreon did very, very well in the match, it dealt with uh, Omega V's Raikou, it dealt with the Noivern. What does it do with? Um, I can't remember what else did Omega V re brought. It could have uh, prevented the Lantern from being annoying. Um, yeah, just. And then, um. And once the Umbria went down, it kind of went a little bit downhill from there. Um, you know, he definitely could have played a lot better. And um, his uh, his team was also pretty weak to uh, Bandit and Tate, which uh, Omega V did end up bringing. And um, it definitely tore a hole through his team. Um, it, and, um, that's pretty much all to say. So uh, that's why the Orlando City superiors in the 13th uh, spot uh, for my power rankings. And now let's move on to the, uh, the 12th spot. So um, for number 12, Rapthos has the SL Benefica. And uh, his reasoning on why he put the SL Benefica in number 12 is because... Uh, well, he didn't leave much to uh, say, but um, you know, 
I'm guessing similar reason to why I had a level 15, but he felt uh, hair played. Uh, or he felt hair did a lot better than uh, on one I had. Um, and uh, he also mentioned that the Destiny Bond play uh, from his Miss Major Son to I think, I think it was from his uh, Miss Major Son and the Among Us was pretty good. It at least uh, made it somewhat less annoying, but you know the damage is already done, so um, that's why uh, that's why our uh, is number uh, here and number twelve. Uh, for my number twelve, I have the Grimsby Town Grimers, and um, you know. He didn't bring enough to break Mandibuzz. Um, I looked at his team. He brought spiking, Spike Stacking Rose Raid with three attacks. That can't really break Mandibuzz. Um, let me, unless it was like a Spex Sledge Bomb. But I, really, I guess it didn't go on the matchup, but anyways. Um, so he brought uh, Defensive Rhythm Heat and Assault Vest Slowbro. Uh, a Bulky Teeter. Um, a Bulky Teeter did alright. But I think an offensive T-Tar maybe, maybe with like a, like, or at least something with Toxic might have been nice to break down Mandibuzz, uh, because his offensive Pokemon were the, were the Mons that um, Sharp brought to check, uh, to check, which was Megalopony and Excadrill, and uh, they also couldn't do much to Mandibuzz, and Mandibuzz just boost the health back. And the click Bray Bird or Foul Play, and you know, Bro just couldn't really do enough. Um, in the number 11 spots, um, Rapthos has the Orlando City Superiors, and, um, and uh, he didn't actually list a reason why. He didn't list a reason for number 11 and number 10, um, which I can't really do anything about. Um, I'm guessing it's similar reasons on why I had the uh, Orlando City Supers number 15 and the Hamilton Tour Cats number 16th, so that's probably why. Um, for number 11, I have the Colorado Rabdash. I admit, I might have put this thing a little lower than I would have liked to, and it was a little hard, you know, after week 1 to rank teams. Um, you know, Mega V, he did play alright, um, but, um, and, you know, the Assault Vest Bracket was a very good bring, I really like that. Uh, thing is though, he did a team builder and the EV spreads are very basic. You know, with offensive Pokemon, it's not as bad. But with defensive Pokemon, uh, such as Lantern and, um, what's the other one? Those are defensive Pokemon he brought. Uh, I can't remember. But you definitely don't want to be slapping a max max spreads on them because you want your defensive Pokemon to tank as much hits as possible. You want to get the most value out of them. And I'm putting 252, 252 isn't exactly the best strategy. Um, on offensive Pokemon, it doesn't really matter too much unless you want to take a certain hit or the extra bulk could come in to play with rolls. Uh, but, you know, I guess he did play well. Maybe he could have ranked a buyer, but, um, you know, I feel like he lucked out a little on uh, D pad's uh, lack of prep for Banadente, and that's why I put him in number 11 spot. Uh, number 10. Uh, Rappos has the Hamilton Tour Cats. Um, goes from a go, you know, some of the reasons, uh, I think, to us why I put number 16. Um, for my number 10, I have the New Orleans Night Days. Not coached by Lucky. He went up against Phantom Base. Now, there was this match that, uh, from the two players, there was a very pivotal turn in this match, uh, to where. And uh, that turn was, um, you know, a Lucky making a very reckless play of Swords Dancing with his Mega Scissor. So he Swords Danced uh, the first time around, um, and then as uh, Phantom Base swapped in his uh, Salamence, so it says there was plus one, and he thought that uh, Tyler Dragon Dance, and he'd get up another Swords Dance at a plus three, he'd kill. Uh, but Tyler didn't drag it up, he went for a Fire Blast, but he unfortunately missed. And that was a very huge turn. That was a very pivotal moment in the match. And, um... He, uh, Lucky also got hit, let his Chansey, um, get taken out with a very well-played Screech Dug Trio. Um, and you know, there wasn't much about the match that I can say, you know, because I believe only Mega Scizor and Chansey hit the field. I think maybe one of their mods that I'm forgetting. Um, there wasn't much. Um, that's pretty much why I have Lucky number 10. 
Um, I don't think he should have switched into the Megazord, in my opinion. I mean, on the Salamence, even if he Dragon it up, either because, you know, there's a plus one Mega on the field. Um, I think Fire Blast is the more optimal play. Or a Fire Fang or Flamethrower or whatever the move is. So, um, that's why Luck is number 10. Um, there wasn't much that I could use to rank him. Um, if he'd win, um, he won 2 2 some hacks. Not saying he could have won without the X. But, you know, it's a little hard to tell, so I'll start with Lucky number 10. Um, Rathos has similar, similar reasoning um, to why he put Lucky number 9. Um, you know, with the whole letting his Duck Trio get taken out with the Screech. I mean, letting his chance to get taken out with the Screech Duck Trio, which is very good sets. And um, the whole Fire Blast Miss thing, which was a little unfortunate. On um, my number 9 spot, I have the Sydney Crocodiles coached by Sharpino. Um, I have him at number 9 because while he was on tilt, um, he did prep accordingly, he did prep accordingly, he played very well, he brought the right Pokemon to deal with, um, the, with his Pokemon, um, you know, he brought like, he brought like Mandibuzz to deal with, uh, Mandibuzz and Muzdale to deal with Megalop and Ex Excadrill. Um, he brought Mega Guard for things like Slowbro um, and I guess like Red and Heat, maybe. Yeah, um, you know he brought the right Pokemon. He prepped very well. Um, played decently well. Made some very good predictions uh, like Mega Horning uh, with his new King on the Slowbro switch. Um, I know Sharp played decently well, and for that I put him at number nine spot uh, this week. So, um, now we're going to move on to the number 8 uh, spots, and um, Rapthos has the SL Benefica in the number 8 spot this week, and um, going to his notes, he has the SL Benefica in number 8 because, oh wait, no, it's not the SL Benefica, it's called it a Ash, but uh, I read it wrong. Um, a little similar on why I had it to, actually, uh, you know, Omega V played well. You know, the Assault Miss Raikou is a very good bring, he felt. Um, um, you know, just playing well, very solid against D-Pad. Um, he did feel that, you know, the switch on Lantern was a little unnecessary because the Earthquake was a little obvious, but, you know, um, he did play well, and that's why he's in our 8th spot uh, for Rapthos. Um, I have the San Antonio Victory Bells in number 8 this week. Um, I have a number eight because while they did, like while they did play very well, um, I felt the prep was like it worked, and you know he did win the match, but the prep he brought I felt wasn't very or wasn't the greatest in terms of what the SL beta figure could have brought. You know, Victini and uh, High Dragon kind of. And Hydreigon, like Victini definitely uh, destroyed the very. Well, we actually have Victini and Hydreigon together, destroyed the very bulky core that Arky brought. And um, you know, while he didn't prep for, like, he I guess he didn't really prep enough for Victini, in my opinion. And um, if Hera did bring Victini, I think the match would have been the opposite. Um, you know, he did win. Congrats to him. But you know, that's that's kind of why having the number eight spot this week. Um, um, so in the number 7 spot, uh, me and Raptos, we both have the New York Cosmog, and, you know, it's a little bit of a shame to wear the Fire Blast uh, hacks, or the miss on uh, Lucky Salamence, you know, it really, really stunk, and, um, because it granted, uh, it granted Lucky, or no, it pretty much... Alright, so the Fire Blast Miss pretty much gave it to where Mega Scissor uh, could have cleaned up late game, just swept his team. I think it picked up five kills or six kills in the match. And, you know, it's a shame because you know, Tyler did play well. He brought a very good Doug Trio set to uh, trap the Chansey and Screech it, and Earthquake does very good. Um, you know, it's just a shame. Um, he did play very well in the beginning of the match. Just. 
game we play. Um, and I think if the Hawks didn't matter, I think the match would have been a lot closer. Um, but uh, I guess it's, you know, I'm hoping Tyler can do better next week. I know he can. Uh, actually, not better. I hope Tyler can bounce back next week. Um, he definitely deserves. He, he definitely deserved the chance to win. Um, but you know, he did play well for what he was able to play in, and uh, that's why he's ranked number seven. Um, in the number six spot, uh, Raptors has ranked the Mastodon Gastrodons at number six, and all he's given me. <laughs> Uh, he told me um, to tell him that. Uh, let me just quickly look at this again. Um, so um, Raptors told me to specifically tell Masto that he is lucky and bad. From that's that's a quote from him. <laughs> I don't know. I think Bush has a joke, but um, um, you know I think he rang Master on because you know even though I want Master on to get lucky in the game, Master did play very well. He had some nice prep. Um, you know, uh, prop, props to the, the Swords Dance Fling Bulu. That was very, very oh, with Hearthstone too, that was some very, very good prep because plus two Fling allows him to Oko the Jirachi, which is a, a quote unquote, which is a check to the top of Bulu. And, uh, you know, plus two Stone Edge with the Hearthstone also knocks out Go Bass. So that's a very good prep, in my opinion. I very, I very well like that prep. Uh, he had some good rings in the Choice Scarf and the Hiligo, which um, was very hard for Joan and the Great League Greninjas to switch into. Um, i trying to remember what else he brought. I think, yeah, but you know, also did play well, um, and that's why I have, well, that's why Raptors is ranked number six. And number six spot for me, I ranked the Lowland Nido Queens in number six. Um, they played very, very well in the beginning of the game. But what I ended up get, getting them the loss was not prepping enough for Clefable. Uh, in my opinion, if you know there's if there's a Clefable in the other team, you you really have to prep um, a lot better. You know he brought I think all, like the best he brought was a I think it was a Sludge Bomb on uh, with Expo Belt on um, Zoroark, which isn't exactly the best prep to take out a Clefable because Clefable can call mind and or have run a Kebby Berry for potential gunk shot and nape. Um, or it could run Cosmic Power and do some shenanigans, you know. But you get a lot of potential to do something, maybe like a Trick Scarf Latios, maybe a, a, um, like a Life Orb. Gunk shot in for Nape uh, that could have dealt some damage in Omega Agron. Um, while it wasn't the best in the matchup, I think it could have dealt with Clef nicely with Roar and Heavy Slam. Uh, Bandit Raptor, I think I, I liked a lot in the matchup. Um, it did better for wall breaking potential instead of um, instead of Scarf Raptor because it didn't have the greatest switches to Bandit Raptor, and um, it would have been a lot harder for Levine to set up with. A classic power slash combine cleft definitely combine clef. Um, you know, well he did, well, he did play around with the Virizion nicely. It's just he didn't really bring enough uh, along with for the Virizion and the Clefable. And while he did come close, uh, I just felt the prep wasn't enough to give him the win. And that's why he's number six this week. Um, in the number five spot, uh, Rathless is the Great Lake Greninjas, and I have the Master on Gastrodons. Uh, Jonah played fantastically in this match. Um, the matchup was not in his favor, in my opinion. Um, I did give him a mock as well, which, um... And, you know, he brought some really nice sets. Agility with Tom Pass Classical was really cool. Um... You know, he worked accordingly well. Unfortunately, just... Pax wasn't the best. Uh, he brought Meteor Master Achi. I... Forgot the reason of why he brought Meteor Master Achi. Um, maybe Iron Head would have been better. I think it might have explained why, but I'm just gonna attack those with Meteor Mash, but you no know, Iron Head's always there, so um You know the misses were unfortunate to get haxed. Uh, but um, you know what happens and you know despite not having the matchup and being locked out of the win, he played fantastically and definitely deserves the number five spot this week. Um I put the Mazadon Gastrodon in the number five slot because you know, despite uh, despite winning with a little bit of fortune, 
Macedon also played very, very nicely. The prep was beautiful, you know, as I mentioned, the Swords Dance, playing Hearthstone Blue. Uh, I love that, though. That's very cool. Uh, you know, and unfortunately, you know, sometimes one person gets lucky in the other in this game we play, but no. He still played very well, and you know, that's why I have a number five spot this week. Um, and then finally, we can move on to the top four. Um, so, I think I swapped the Lola. Yeah, yeah, I swapped the Lola Needle Queens and the San Antonio Victory Bells. Um, around those actions, the Lola Needle Queens number four. You know, they felt they played well. Um, they, he felt he played well enough to earn the number four spot, which I can agree to an extent, but I felt that, you know, he didn't prep enough for Clefairy without type point number six, but that was good enough for the point number four. He felt it could have been higher if he won and prep better for Clefable. I do agree with that. Um, I have the Great Lake Greninja's at number four, you know, similar to why Raptos is the Great Lake Greninja's at number five. He played very well, matchup wasn't in his favor. Brought some very unique sets, did the best he could. Sometimes fortune just decides to dump on you, and you gotta take it uh, the way you can. So, um, so Rapidos has uh, number th and number three, the San Antonio Victory Bells. Um, you know, he had a very dominant win over the Asha Benfica. Um, he felt the win was just given to him, um, and. He had a very good Among Us set, he felt. Uh, unfortunately, the Among Us got taken out by Destiny Bond. Um, I don't remember the Among Us set, maybe it was Assault Vest, I think, but. Uh, which actually does make some sense to take hits from, like, Hydreigon and Mega Blastoise. Um, line number three, I have the Boston Kamoo. Um, the Boston Kamoo played very, very well with a substitute Verizion, um, forcing um, the Ground and Glide score to make switches. And to get his infernape uh, very low, um, he took out the Lottie out. Well, yeah, I think it was a Lottie. Yeah, a Lottie Yos very early. Um, you know, he he took he took the things out that might hurt Clef, and he once he got everything whittled down, he took the opportunity. He he realized what his win condition was. Brought in the Clefable, set up with it. Um, it was a very, very good set. Cost of power did very well against his team, and just proceeded to clean the game up and win 2-0. Um, that's why I have the Boston Camo in number three. And in number two, um, Raptus is the Boston Camo. Is similar to what I have for number three. You know, played very well. Realized his win condition. Um, he also added, quote unquote. Um, well, I won't exactly say, I won't say the exact thing, um, he is scumbag Clefable set, <laughs> which, you know, it's fair, because, you know, Clef is scum unless you're in, like, some offensive, um, no recovery life or, because <laughs> Clef is fat, like, Clef is really fat, uh, my number two at the Tampa Bay Frogadiers, uh, unfortunately, you know, Verd got very unlucky, but, you know, despite being, despite being, um, on the receiving end of poor luck, or just, I don't know, receiving. But just being at the side of bad luck, he didn't let that get to him. He played very well. He brought, he prepped accordingly. You know, he brought like a specially defensive, or like a, or at least mixed defensive Ampharos to deal with the Thunderous Incarnate, which was very good prep. He got the Volcanion weakened, which was a huge threat to his team. He made some very smart switches, um, exerted a lot of offensive pressure with his Weavile. Uh, it was a very good battle, and you know I definitely see Vert potentially taking uh, reclaiming his title this season. And uh, so, congrats to Vert on that. You've run the number two spot this week, and the number one spot. Um, both Raptos and I, uh, we have the Virginia Tech Frokies coached by Jake. Uh, he took on the Hamilton Tour Cats, and you know Jake played phenomenally. He prepped very very nicely. He had a um, uh, you know, the Palos one is a very good bring because it allowed him to set up rocks, it allowed, um, to, it pre allowed him to pressure a Zydog, uh, the opponent's Zydog, um, it could take hits, it could take a hit from unboosted Volcarona, it could take a hit from non-boosting in Drakion, um, 
Rock, set up rocks, be annoying. The clef key set was very, very good. Um, he had heal block on the clef key uh, to prevent like slack off Mega Slowbro or um, you know wish Automa because Automa was very annoying and um, Jake didn't want him to wish pass and I thought that was very good. He had uh, Toxic and Spikes played with it phenomenally. Um, Tangle throws a great defensive pivot to Zydog. Zydog. I was like on 10% whatever you want to call it. Um, and you know, he just played very well, predicted um, a go turn for turn, and um, wheedled a lot of his poke, a little, wheedled a lot of his mons to where his uh, Garchomp with the, uh, the Z Outrage uh, could just clean up late game and just win the game. You know, Jake had a very dominating start, winning 4 0, and um, you know, congrats to Jake. Props to him for winning that match. Um, and that's why you deserve a number one spot this week. So, um, yeah, that's that's going to conclude the power rankings for week one. Um, you know, I guess wasn't the great. <laughs> um, you know, it's a little hard to do power rankings week one. Uh, especially, with, especially um, you know, with sometimes luck interfering and... Uh, it was a little hard to tell, you know, the first couple of weeks, but as we start getting into the later weeks, maybe around week 4, week 5, it might be a little easier to tell which teams are on top and which teams are on the bottom. And, you know, so one game doesn't determine how well a coach's playing ability can be. Um, word of advice, uh, to the co if, you, if you're watching this as a coach and you're seeing that you're not in a spot you'd prefer you wouldn't like to be, you know, you'd prefer to be at the top or somewhere closer to the top, you know, um, don't let that get to you, don't let that break you, use it to motivate you to get better, to play better, to, uh, aspire better, I guess, um, you know, unfortunately, not everybody can beat the number one spot, but, uh, so, anyways, that's gonna conclude, uh, week one of PMC Power Rankings, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, my name is Darth Vader, one of your PMC analysts, and um, I'll see you guys next week for week two of Power Rankings, and hopefully with my co-host. Uh, goodbye.